Hey everybody, it's your Salty Neighbor Giant here with a quick update for Ashes of Creation. Yesterday, Intrepid Studio released the director's letter from Steven Sharif about the current state of the game. And thanks to community member Redbeard, we have a recording of set Q&A that was happening right after the letter dropped in the Discord. Also, I want to say thanks to Chase from the Ashen Post who did a full written transcript of set Q&A. So if you don't want to listen to the whole thing because it is over one hour long, you can go and read the written transcript. I will link it below. So here you go, guys, the full Q&A with Steven Sharif. Uh, designs that had to be implemented. For example, we would need some certain class systems. Uh, we would need a, the objective-based uh, PvP that we would want for the battlegrounds. Um, uh, there was some additional uh, mechanics that that had to be created in order to facilitate those battlegrounds actually being present. Uh, in order to create the BR, the only thing that we had to do was really create the weapons and the skills associated with them. Everything else was kind of rudimentary. The the animation set, the ability for players to move in certain in certain ways, um, uh, actually populating the map itself, creating the the uh, two by two, uh, two and a half by two and a half map. That was that was all very easy to do and required less time to stand up. Additionally, there's a, another key component. A three by three, a five by five, a 15 by 15 does not allow us to test high population, which was- all Right, so make the, multiple instances of that in the same server. Yeah, but that's wait, not the issue. You can do no, a high level. You that is not how level. you test that, right? Multiple instances does not test how you render replication from one player in a single area to a hundred other players. Having multiple instances of that spin, spun up does not allow us to test those things. So we have to have a high population type game style. And the only present high population game style currently that's available is a battle royale feature. So Wait, so what about, a, what about battle a zero? Zero. Are open no, zero. Alpha zero. zero? We had the whole map there. Alpha Zero, Alpha Zero was uh, an, a, a much bigger system for sure, but it wasn't using the new architecture that we had. And in order to update Alpha Zero to basically utilize that new infrastructure, that's creating Alpha One. And the timeline to get Alpha One up and running was a timeline that was far more considerable than the timeline it would take to get the battle royale testing the certain fundamental features that apply to the technology behind making Alpha One possible, which is, again, why we decided to go that route. Okay, so so do you see yet why this was a fucking giant disaster yet? Like, are you are you like Actually, cognitive of what I, happened I with Battle Royale? As, I view the Battle Royale as successful in the sense that it gave us the necessary information to adjust and fix some from some architecture that was necessary to move forward with Alpha One. It did provide that. Additionally, it also provided us insight to some platform issues that we also experienced uh, with regards to account services, the new website, uh, traffic that we were supposed to be scalable for uh, that we needed to adjust. Publicity. I mean, yeah, I mean, learn what, I mean, you, learn what you can the, the bottom line from your is, mistake. The bottom, the bottom line is an, an open development. Yes, there is an opportunity for negative publicity. Anytime something goes wrong, is a negative publicity. The key point and the key takeaway is that the prize at the end of the day is still creating the MMORPG that we're all working towards. In 2019. And, and when I believe whatever whatever, whatever it is to make it right and to make it come out the way that we all expect it to is the time that's going to be associated with it. We're still all here working towards that. So what percentage of completion is question. the Alpha well, 1 at right now? Like if you won't give timelines roughly, what is the percentage of completion for launch of Alpha? A lot. Of, I mean, almost all of the key systems are in place. It, the really the key component is establishing the changes we need for that backend infrastructure that we had to rearchitect. Do you have a working hybrid combat system yet? We have uh, multiple working hybrid combat systems that we're testing. Yes. Do so we in terms of a percentage? Presses? Do you have a rough percentage? Like, are we talking seventy-five, fifty? I, I don't have. Yeah, I don't have a percentage that I would be comfortable. Be comfortable yeah, kind of that's setting. fine. Hey, I'm not going to ask you too many specific hey, like questions, but I will, say, about I, the said, I will say one other thing. Okay, sure, you can. But okay. I will say one other thing. The other thing is that, you know, from my perspective, obviously coming out with a, you know, that letter and informing you guys of the delay, that's um, that's not something that I, <laughs> I want to have to do at the end of the day or that the team wants to have to do. But, should have though. But, you should have done it, it earlier, it, yeah, it is, if we're being it, frank. It, well, we can't can't do it until we have answers. We can't do it until we have answers. A lot has changed. I, almost I everyone I've talked to for months and months and months now has had zero faith that the uh, uh, initial release dates for anything were actually sure. going to be like sure. 
true. That's totally fine. As a yeah, player, speculation, looking in, looking into a development, you're more than entitled to have that type of speculation. Well, that's, I mean, it's not speculation, though. It's just uh, wait, experience it's that's been proven time and time again from an outside point looking in on game development. Yo, you go make yeah, The time frames given to us weren't, weren't yeah, accurate, and that's fine. With, it is speculation, though, unless game. you have a firm understanding of the development and the features that are associated with it. and are Perhaps, Steve. It's not going to change as, uh, this, as your first game, game you have a very firm game understanding game of every title of a game. Well, that may MMO. remain true that you know these dates don't always uphold and you know most people with a brain can figure that out that sometimes there's delays you reiterating that the game is going to release at a certain point over and over and over and over and over made That's me cringe to the wind yeah i know mean, according to the time line, i operate from a timeline i mean that's what i do i know the timeline I mean, is not happening Steve, Steve, here's the problem Steve, most me. people are not developers. i know hold on they don't let, me finish. let me finish star citizen operates perfectly fine without even giving a date you know, that was always an option not to give a date. Correct. Correct, yes. That, yeah, that but is correct. See, people and that's, and that's, and that's, the, course adju- that's the course adjustment we've just taken. Exactly. Is, yeah. is, is not giving that date anymore. And exactly. you know, I'm, still, I'm still asked the question, what's the percentage and what's the delay? Yeah, I know, I know, Stephen, I know. But you don't have to give an answer. Yeah, that's something I, you that's, need to that's, you the, just that's what we just released to today. That is exactly that's how what Stephen is released today. So, Stephen... Yes. Stephen likes um, to us. Yes. So my question is this, is that you talk about the the development of the game and how it's progressing sure. smoothly and smoothly and smoothly and all these stuff yes. you're implementing. But as a community, at least from my perspective, I don't see what you're feeling. And I understand that 100%, which is part do you of have any? Yeah, do you have any plans in the future to actually like start showing us more and more and more of the mechanics? 100%. Tomorrow's stream. Yeah, so that's so, an important so, note. The, the, biggest, the biggest update, I think, from a, a company perspective and development-wise uh, is that while, you know, okay, I'll just say this, is since September, the studios has been crunching like a ridiculous amount of hours. And sometimes what happens when developers are in the thick of it is you lose perspective on the marketing aspect. And, you know, when I say marketing, I mean basically having a front facing image into what development is doing. With having brought on Margaret as well as Sarah. Right, which we didn't have was that that marketing team basically to to take what the developer is creating in raw editor and make it a presentable thing to the public. Um, what Margaret and Sarah have been getting up to speed on since they've been hired, I've tasked them with that specific role, and what they've been producing so far is is very good, uh, and that's scheduled to start releasing on a weekly basis this month. So. Uh, yes, we'll I do see. agree that with something that that yeah, needs- but this is something you've said in the past that just hasn't like, st- like that things are going to come like on a monthly basis, past, monthly but, blog. Well, we'll, 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 we'll see next week, yeah. Um, I see, yeah, there are there are blogs scheduled for next. Stephen, I think the ironic thing here is that I, you know I think that Sarah and Meg, you're doing a good job, and you know it's nice to have them as part of the team. I think the ironic thing kind of is the fact that since they've come on. You know, I would argue that this was a mistake that was made. You might disagree with me, but that's for another day. But basically, there's been a negative community theme that's been derived from, you know, pushing the monthly artwork cosmetics without basically supplementing additional, you know, MMO development, sure. new content. Yeah. So basically, that really pushes the, the you know, theme of, of monetization as the priority and not necessarily producing a quality game. And they've recently come on board, but I haven't really seen that well, they're balanced in any way, and that's a concern for me from a marketing and communication standpoint. Sure, that's a that's a valid that's a valid point, and I would uh, you know mirror that with the fact that it is a discussion I have had um, with uh, <clears throat> the team as well. Is that yes, we did have um, you know monthly cosmetics that were promised since Kickstarter, and the amount of resources necessary in order to uh, present those monthly cosmetics is is mostly a concept artist that is creating these you know production ready concepts for the character team to put into their pipeline for development and that was pre-planned out uh you know back in kickstarter when we kind of said these monthly cosmetics would be released and that's um and that's fine it doesn't impact the development yeah it game. is fine like we but understand would, it's not hard to do for we sure a plan for a work but episode, when though. we see nothing else no, it's no, no, like that's, that's it almost feels like saying, tongue in cheek you know sure that's the point i was saying was that Again, since September, right, we've been crunching very hard and we had some issues in December. 
uh, that prevented us from continuing with the normal time associated with preparing work for being displayed to the public. And having brought on uh, Margaret and Sarah is what allows us now to, to basically get back to showing a development, which is what they've been preparing. Can I say one thing? Sure. You can say whatever I don't like that like. the Discord feels like elementary school, though. So, the one thing I was going to say before we continue, I'm not trying to harp on the Battle Royale thing, but as I said in the chat, you know, perception's reality. I've never played a game or tested a game where there was a game mode or version of the game that was not going to be included in the primary game. From every MMO I've played, from Planicide 1, Dark Age of Camelot, you name it, if I ever mm -hmm. tested those, all right, I've never had this game mode that wasn't there. So when people Times see this... Changed. Bullshit. Shut up with that. That's nonsense. Okay. Right. Let's tell me times have changed. This is like loading up World of Warcraft, and you're playing some mini game instead of doing quests in North Shire Abbey. Sure. There was nothing here that was built sure. on that says this is going to be an MMO game. This, yeah. I, and I don't care about the monetization or the delays. I don't give a fuck yeah. about that. But what I'm talking about here is the perception that I have. I could tell you, I could speak for over a thousand people in our guild mm -hmm. that were looking at your game here. Everybody thinks your game is complete shit based that's on that battle royale, and that's fine. But hold on, based yeah. on that battle royale, okay? Now, if there was sure. something there, um, classes, you know, basic foundations of what the game is going to be to build upon, right. things would have been a lot different. I'm not going to pretend like I have yeah. inside knowledge or know your development. I get sure. that. But what I'm telling you from somebody Perfect. who did back the game and has a lot of guys who want to play it, yep. it stinks like shit. And seeing, the, and seeing this, no classes, no nothing, and then saying, well, this is mm -hmm. not representative of the final product, then, brother, why the fuck is it even there? So and the how many players did you have? I, hold on, one, one last thing. How many players were in that Battle Royale total? We had um, 86,000 registered No, 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 accounts. no, per match, per match. Oh, okay. 200. Per match. We had a 200 test just three weeks ago or four weeks uh, in a single match. But what I would say to answer your question <clears throat> is specifically um, the key component to why uh, the BR mode of Apocalypse uh, wasn't representative of what the MMORPG is going to be is because we have a very unique approach to combat that relates to creating a hybrid system from a direct action and skill-based combat system uh, that we did not have specific design data for that we wanted to uh, get design data for. So what you're experiencing in Apocalypse, which is 100% action combat that's not going to be representative of the MMO gameplay, uh, is specifically so that we can get design data in order to create a hybrid system that has a tab uh, targeted focused and action combat availability chosen by the player that interacts well with each other because they those two types of combat systems have very different tempo and I have yet to see an MMORPG implement the two together. I have seen in Terra that they have had a soft target uh, action combat system, but I haven't seen a direct correlation between what is traditional tab targeting and action-based combat. And what we wanted to test were specific systems that related to action combat only in hit scan and projectile-based uh, 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 combat. So that would be why this this gameplay is not necessarily representative of what an MMORPG is going to be, because it's testing specifically the action combat aspect of it. But this goes into the idea. Think that that was, was actually so all the negative press and all the bad perception that people see the game. You really think you're holding on a battle royale, not a 100 versus 100, not even a siege battle, a field battle of anything else. Something well, representative, okay, that I can say. I know castles are coming, but I'm telling you this. Yeah. Is castles are coming, no, castles are delayed. Well, what we ended up getting was the battle royale. I know I hate to keep harping on, but this is you have to see this is the main focal point of everybody's anger. What's a big problem, Stephen? It's a lot of little problems, okay? It's, and I so, think it's just your, I mean, the problem yeah, is, is that the filter world. that we have been able to view the game through has been a bad it's not, one. It's not the same as and it's not the same that Stephen's it's gone. Yeah. It's gone yeah. so long now where we haven't had any sure. like proper interaction with the development or proper but insight I, into the development. You guys don't deserve that it. Whatever you do at this point, you're going to get negative <laughs> response so to it. Like, I'm it's, sorry, it's, it's unfortunate. It's acceptable. It's, listen, in my eyes, during the development, it is okay to be angry. It is okay to not like decisions because you don't either uh, have a full view or grasp of how development is moving forward on the game, and that's understandable. I understand that. Uh, what I would say is that by the... When Alpha 1 and Alpha 2 and the betas hit, or the game launches, whatever the deal may be, uh, our plan is to execute the, the vision of the MMORPG to perform and release with the expectation that we promised and that I want 
in personally funding this entire project <laughs> outside of what we've raised through Kickstarter, which is a very small portion of the budget of this project. But I will say that I am here to make sure and the rest of my team that is passionate about this project to make sure that we deliver on an MMORPG. So being frustrated now in the middle of development is okay to be frustrated. My prediction is that when the game releases and releases to the expectation and standards of everyone in this room who might be upset or whatever the deal may be, um, uh, it, it will be it will be not remembered. You will be experiencing the game that you signed up for, and it will come out in a timely manner. Uh, and whatever the the uh, direction that the company took, which you may have disagreed with, will have brought us to that end. Uh, it was very important that the BR uh, was done. It was a quick release uh, of a system that did test very key components uh, and backend systems that were needed to be tested. Uh, and it revealed them at an early stage, which made the fixing of it much less of a problem than it would have been at a later stage. I do so, uh, understand the negative press that is if totally- If I can interject. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Sorry, um, I mean, the thing is like, most people investing in this game, it's a, a, a more of a big deal uh, from their perspective perspective than you know like an all's well that ends well you know type of viewpoint so like yeah man i hope to god that you guys deliver i really do because game companies have been shitting on gamers for years now and it's yes. infuriating um and i sincerely honestly hope to god that you guys just make the greatest mmo uh but i can't take like an all's well that ends well like viewpoint like I, i'm not afforded that luxury because sure. i sit and i work from home and i'm like god i fucking want a game to play all oh, right there's not so uh let me just I, sit I mean, on my I understand fucking thumb. That. That's, that's the reason why i started intrepid <laughs> is because of that same you know feeling and you know when i'm presented with options moving forward and how to develop ashes of creation um you know we move forward with what is the best case uh recommendation from veterans in this industry who've literally worked on some of our favorite mmorpgs so you know i i yeah but veterans in the industry don't equal like a perfect project like this has been like not. a clear no, example this is the biggest no, example in most gaming industries like Oh, this no. person worked on uh, Blizzard, you know, like every team, like, oh, these sure. we have people from Blizzard Entertainment, and then all of a sudden, sure. it's like the game is like awful. And then sure. you, can, you can't go like, oh, wow, we have people from this team, this team, this team, and it's like, oh, it's going to make our thing amazing. Oh, That's not how things work in the gaming but that industry. Doesn't, but that also doesn't discount the fact that, that veteran and experience does equate to some sort of positive case scenario when developing a project. Yeah, you know, I mean, look um, at Anthem. It, it had a lot of veteran team experience, and then look what happened to sure. it. Weird, right? I mean, Again, it doesn't yeah, discount... No Again, I have a question. That, that does, Weird, I mean, right, you, right. Can't, you can't use those those anecdotal, you know, examples as why hiring veterans is not a good thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I but like I don't using the example the of it, it's just like uh, also yeah. it it doesn't one does not equal another. Like I'm not cool. saying it does. I don't it, think it's. I'm not, it's I, not that's not my point. I'm sorry. Sure that's not my point. Correlate. Look at Bless Online. They were all new and their game sucked. No, they weren't <laughs> all new. Good. That's the difference. I don't. I don't think it's about the fact that like hiring people with previous experience is bad or good it's that it's not guaranteed yeah and you yeah, look, i would say as a general life lesson it should be understood for people and you know that nothing's guaranteed but what i would say that is everyone here is working towards that end uh, I mean, that's that's what we're doing. We're doing it in an open way where we do come out with, you know, a letter like today that is not a, you know, a fun one to deliver to. Yeah, but a ton know, of other Kickstarter games are doing that right now because they're all in the same area. Like, this but isn't a new what? thing. This is a, they're in the same, like, pit hole that you're in to announce delays. Like, this has been happening in a bunch of other Kickstarter games. Like, you're not the only one. The obvious thing is correct. People see these mistakes constantly sure. made over and over. And they're going to lose confidence in a big way. I mean, no, actually, sure. you may not think it, but this letter today and the, the, the events leading up to it has been a major drop in confidence. And you said that you hope by the time this game releases that people will simply forget. No, people don't forget, Stephen. You, you know as well as I, I do, think, people do I think not that forget. People don't forget experiences in a game. I think that experiences during development, I think that things happen. And uh, when you know they're first logging in and experiencing the MMORPG, 
that's what people won't forget. And oh. I think that that first if it's good, an MMO you're review, assuming it's going to be good. Correct. Oh, I know. <laughs> you're, you're assuming it's going to be good. Stephen, I, 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 I know you might not want to hear it, but there is, there is a valid chance that your MMO may only be successful in a niche sense. I mean, there is that always that possibility that sure. Ash is a creation of, of ends up as a very niche MMO. So, you know, you have to be realistic. Yeah, but I mean, he can't it, bank on that. Yeah, you take that back. So, so there's a lot of risk inherent in this MMO, and Stephen, I've heard you of mention course. that you know you take on you take on a vast. Obviously, this is a new startup. You take on a huge amount of risk, and you know, I'm, I, my question for you is basically, yeah. you talk about fully funding this project. So, you know, I I have a business. It's big. It's multi million dollar business. I have 148 staff. If I go invest in a project like this, I would say you know take two million dollars. I would leverage that equity by probably about 80 percent with a bank. I would have some restricted covenants and basically that's how I would fund the money that I actually needed to do a project like this of this scale. I guess uh, my question is with the money that you've gotten, is it, is it heavily leveraged with the bank or is it like, banks, are you banks very will not exposed? Leverage, well, just, just so you're aware, banks it's will not a risky business most software. Most software yeah. development projects, banks are very conservative institutions. They will not leverage any, uh, you know, debt, I guess, if you're talking about uh, for a project of this size. So have you used what your other assets as collateral? Collateral for this project? Well, what you would want to do if you were to raise outside funding, you would want to raise outside funding through venture capitalists for the most part because they're usually more risk oriented uh, if they can see the like long, you know, longevity of the project. I have not done that. No, this is all that a game? personal. So this is all you between basically your personal assets. So, okay. I just wanted to confirm that fact. The other thing is, I just want to make a quick comment about, you know, it does say in the news feed, it says, quote, you know, state of the game. I just yeah. want you to be aware, you know, in the news for the stream, you know, that really leads one to expect basically that there will be some form of meaningful proof of concept, MMO related content likely tomorrow, not recycled content, not environmental content with no interaction. I, you know, I really hope you're going to be able to deliver so us the something content, to quell our the content that The content that you're going to experience is, again, based on a content roadmap that will begin uh, this month. That is what I believe next week is when a, like every other day scheduled content release is going to be. And it does revolve mainly around, uh, uh, I believe, nodes. Uh, and there is also a video. That's Meaningful in-game this... footage of nodes that's new or so recycled? So you're going to see, you're going, no, it's everything is, everything oh, is. Oh, is this going to be nodes three we hear about? Because you're, didn't you say no three um, was gonna come out when you had new relevant wait, what are we gonna see, was gonna be a surprise? So you're going you're going to see some of the back end tech that that is involved in the development of Alpha One's nodes. Uh, that kind of gives you insight into into how we propagate and collect the experience and uh, actually create this this tech that's behind node propagation and existence in the world. Uh, so back end content, but not necessarily actual in game state oh no, of the game. Just how it's going to work. It's all in. It's all an editor. So it's everything all is in game. game. Technically. Okay, because so, that's what this leads us to believe. So I just you know I think it's important right. for the where, transparent where and honesty piece. Yeah, just so you guys are aware, the way that games work is, you know, you have an engine, right? Our engine is Unreal Engine 4. Unreal Engine 4 has what's called an editor. Uh, editor is where you create the game, basically. You place game assets, you have the world map, you have the ability to run around an editor and whatnot. Um, and then what happens is you package that uh, editor, uh, the game itself, into a client. Uh, and then that client connects to a server, which then connects you to other clients and whatnot. Um, so what you're going to see is an editor, one of the developers in the world, in the game world, world actually placing uh, nodes and showing you how the tech is, is behind what you won't see uh, if you were a character in the game necessarily. That's one of, I believe that's the first video that's scheduled uh, for this month. I have a question to, hold on, to follow that up, Stephen, to follow oh, that sure. up. Is this stuff going to be pre-recorded or is it going to be done live? Oh no, this is all, this is all pre-recorded. There's like an interview. Mm -hmm. It's like an interview kind of. You're going to have one of the developers who is uh, responsible for um, you know, whatever the topic of that particular diary is, uh, and being interviewed by Margaret, and then uh, you're going to have video that coincides with it, and you kind of see the thing happening, um, and then that's kind of the... So, yeah, to follow that up quickly again, you know, when I see things like Crowfall and these other projects, they actually often do live demonstrations rather than pre-recorded. Will, will we ever see any actual live mechanic demonstrations like that? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't deserve yes. it. Obviously, obviously, when, Stephen, you know, as, when? 
Yes, uh, give us an exact date. I don't like think he can give you uh, an exact date. Yeah. Give us an exact date. Remember, and time you right know now. what? That is so funny because you better watch out. I'll go, I'll go full zis right now. Proxy, I'll go full zis. Proxy, you are a full, you are a perfect <laughs> example of someone who just said, "Yeah, you shouldn't give dates," and then literally ten minutes later it. says, "When is this going to happen?" I mean, that's like, hey, I shouldn't yeah, eat all these cookies. Say, dude. That just but if you stuff eat all the cookies, it's just you're a because yeah, he as a member can do that. You as the CEO cannot re encourage it and respond. <laughs> That's right. yeah, yeah. You think, I'm not making I, a game. I'm not, I'm not wasting not millions of dates, dollars making an MMO. doesn't mean we don't want to do it. Steven, I have a question about the bear animation yeah. that was brought out a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh, God. I, and I, no, 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 no. So it's you not. Really it's actually not about animation. the anime. I know I do. It's the concrete damn bear from hell. But anyways, as an aside note, so my question on that specific piece is, the red tape surrounding the release of that is such a small piece in development. You know, it was, it, I, I know that a lot of the community built up the hype on it. I know, you know, we really kind of, and Maggie was honest and transparent, you know, she didn't really overhype it. I think the piece that kind of threw me was once we finally got to a point of where it was the day of being released, which took a couple days, then it seemed like it was like, a lot of back and forth to you to finally approve it. And for something that's in development like that, it just seems like that's a lot of red tape to go through to show something that you could tag as work in progress when you've shown things like the Alpha Zero footage. Yeah, it wasn't so much showing it. It was the manner in which it was proposed to be shown. It was it was proposed to be like, um, you know, and this the idea was that this was going to be like a, a major release and we were going to post it on like social media. And, and to me, I didn't feel that what we were showing was major enough to give it to be given that much fan play. I felt it was more like a discord leak that should be, you know, pr shown to maybe content creators and they can kind of spread it themselves, but not something that was significant enough that should be given that type of level of uh, display. That Steven, was that, that was the insight to that. Just so you're aware, ah, dude, bear animation oh, is and, super important. I want to say something. <laughs> it, was, it was like a five second cycle. Of I would like to say something. Can we get oh, more man. things like the bear animation thing with just a work on progress nice. on it? Because that was really interesting to see. You don't absolutely, deserve it, absolutely. But... And that's no, you're absolutely right. And that's <laughs> what part the newsletter of what. Say. That's part of what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's in the newsletter, but that's part of what um, <laughs> Margaret and Sarah are setting up. Is basically having a regular trickle uh, uh, of those types of content out to the community moving forward. I mean, that's, that's, that's their, their. And I think there. moving forward is super, you know, we're all optimistic, hopefully. Well, some of us are pessimistic about moving optimistic forward, but I think the pieces I was going to say, <laughs> it's just, it's been, it's been such a, it's been such a dry few months yep. that, you know, until we actually start seeing things, it's really hard to Ask take that statement. At hey, moving moving backwards. Listen, Ask just so you, just so you understand. I totally understand that. It is like there, there is. It's not like it's not like I walk into you know this this voice channel and expect everybody to be you know all happy about things. I understand be. the the. Well, it's just you're so fortunate to see all the things in the no, office. No, I know, and, and, that's, yeah. and that is and that is part of what Sarah and Margaret are working to uh, to change. I mean that that is what is going to be happening. So what I would say it, is it does need take to a change. look at March. You take a look at March. <laughs> See what they're call me. You know, the I mean, you take a look at January, oh, where we're supposed to have that. I have a, I have a question as well. Apocalypse come, and it just got froze. Like, there's been Correct. so many things where, where it's like, oh, just wait in... for this. Like this month, it's gonna be it. Like you guys are all gonna see, and then it's Again, like, stabby, oh, next month. December and January and February, those were months where we had issues that we needed to fix. I mean, I, I want to refer understand. to them. That's fine. I'm I mean, just I saying perfectly those understand are the issues, but I'm saying it, like it always equals this like this hype for something where it's like i would yes, say it it's going to, i mean i would just say december through February. i've, I've been here for two years like i i've i've watched like the development progress from when kickstarter came there have been like clear moments of overhype and then something falls down like all like right. don't you mean, I, I have also I've also been here for over two years and I haven't <laughs> seen those things. <laughs> I haven't I seen that. what it. I've seen is what I've seen is us hitting dates before December, uh, just fine. And and us in the studio, uh, you know, working hard to hit those dates uh, specifically. And I did see that in December, we did what every single development is going to do is run into something that needs to change and address the changes. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, I've, what, I've what I would this, like to know, what I would like to know, Stephen, is 
is do you think that there is a better way for you guys maybe to like share content even if it's just little things that may what be what did the newsletter say what did the newsletter say it's that's okay maybe, maybe yeah, but just, maybe I'm not that's not that's not what okay. I'm asking I okay. mean it's it's obvious there's all sorts of negative reception you know on YouTube here there I mean there's good stuff there's bad stuff but at the end of the day there's obviously a large portion of the community that feels a very direct way about a lot of different things that you guys have been showing over all like this whole period of time um yeah. at this point it's persisted to whatever changes are made like there will be a negative reception like say you start releasing lots of little sneak peeks people are gonna be like well where the fuck was this last month you know language why, yeah. why couldn't we see that before or you know you maybe could go for some more structured route like yeah. However, like whatever happens, that's, it's that's okay. resisted for so long that people are still gonna that's feel like the butter. biggest Again. content creators for Ash the Creation were tired of the BR. Like Lazy Peon, I clearly remember him saying in the the testing, yeah, Lazy it's gonna Peon's be another. Ass, though. Okay, but he's got the most referrals for this game. Like, so yeah, like, there's reasons for that. Fucking though. scam. Yes, no, but, he, I mean, like, he is one of the biggest YouTubers to be like pushing this game right now. But, like, even he goes, like, one of the biggest faces of Ash's creation right now goes, like, when are we not going to get any, when are we going to get something different? Like, it, it's, it's a, it's not just so again, me who has this. Is, now you have of us. The yeah. when is, the when is something we just adjusted, right? That is, that is something we're moving forward, going to be more confident when we say when, um, <clears throat> and make sure that that when is accurate. But what I would say, you know, with regards to the question prior to that, um, from, I think it was, uh, Alcadius, maybe, um, was that, uh, you know, yes, the way that we're going to be releasing content um, is going to be different. I mean, the community team now with Margaret and Sarah, it, that's their primary focus is structuring content release so that uh, our community who's following the project has an opportunity to see uh, not only progress, but has the opportunity to see uh, that progress in action and the tech behind that progress and, and what really encompasses um, uh, creating Alpha One and, and the game in general. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, what I was what really was trying, waiting for. Yeah, like, what I was really trying to get at is just, you know, it's like, for me, and, you know, I'm sure I can speak for many others because of the comments that I've read and everything that I've seen, it's like, for something as simple as, like, the character models, and then people see these, like, recolors, it's like, there's an obvious negative reception about that, but then nobody knows if you guys are like, okay, yeah, we, th this is bad, we have to redo this, so everyone's kind of just in this puzzled mode that they don't really know what's going on because we're not really given sure. much at all say, of even just little basic concepts. Yeah. And I would know? say, like, give us give us the opportunity that you know, enacting now what we've kind of just shown you through both the letter and and what the community team's been working on uh, to roll out um, that uh, new content and that content uh, kind of releases. I have a follow up question. Really for that. Yes, Stig. I have a follow up Holy question. Shit. Uh, armor those mage forged armor. Mm -hmm. Mana Forge? Uh, yeah. Sets. Mana, yeah. I'm wondering why I should care about getting <laughs> cosmetics in the BR if you I can get better... Here's over. Here's over. It doesn't if matter. I, if I can get better armor, the same armor with bet that looks better in the MMORPG. Maybe not as a collector. It's a, it's Just a good don't question. buy it. I think, I think the majority of, of what is... Um, uh, as an answer to that is going to just be the variety, the kind of uniqueness that that's present in either the. But what I can get in APOC is worse than what I can get in the MMORPG. But not but every cosmetic is going to be. Oh, so you can play it. I think I think <laughs> worse. Like I, th I would say probably worse is a more <laughs> subjective term because people <laughs> may, you know, they might they might think they like frostburn. <laughs> If I mean, you like it, you're gonna go and get it. Be, uh, like but that's how kind of how that works. If you don't if you don't like it, don't buy it. <laughs> Another thing Biggs, I would say is that um, uh, the effort required in order to earn the cosmetics that may be similar within the MMO are uh, are greater than the effort it might be necessarily to earn in Apocalypse or vice versa, right? Like there, there's also going to be the means by which those cosmetics get earned. I have a, I have a question to piggyback off of that one. Sure. Um, from someone in here. Uh, do you still plan to keep the BR after release? It it really depends on what the BR is is providing. At the time right now, the BR continues to provide us data that's necessary. Both yeah, design. but the BR is the only thing out, so it's the only thing that does provide information. Well, yeah, it's not enough for long. Tech. 
Yeah, it provides different information than the other modes. Correct. Um, uh, Stephen, what what percentage of the map of the MMORPG oh, map do you think we're going to have uh, in alpha and beta? Hasn't this information already so, been released? Don't answer that. Don't answer it. No, no. Twenty-five percent of the map is scheduled right. currently in alpha one. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then moving forward, it, it really kind of depends on what um, milestones we achieve for like Alpha 2 and beyond. Um, my objective is that we achieve at least 50% of the world map for Alpha 2. And then by beta, we'll need to have at least 100% of the world map operating. Okay, so we'll be playing 100% in beta. Correct. There won't be any missing, uh, like, checked under wraps. All okay. the map. Steven, yeah. if I could throw <laughs> in a, a suggestion or an idea. Sure. So, and this might have been brought up before, I got in here late, I apologize if it was, but for me, and as we've seen, like, for, for me, combat combat is hugely important. How a game plays, how a game feels is one of the most incredibly important things to me. I know you guys are still working on the hybrid combat system, from your testing with the BR, and your testing from Alpha Zero, and future testing. I'm wondering, when it comes to these, uh, this roadmap coming up, and this uh, content that's being shown, I think it would be a great idea just to like to start putting together the basics of the other classes. And the reason why for that is because there are, there are people who know or feel they know what they're going to play. Necromancer, Rogue, Fighter, anything you name of it. And if you start putting together classes and throwing them out for us, we can start talking about them. We can start theory crafting. We can start putting together more ideas, see the basics of how these classes actually operate. You know? And I think it'll go a long way to actually making people happy because yeah like yeah. we're waiting for more classes classes are huge combat's huge to people and the combat's not done the classes yes. could really help towards that i so think when you, you get them finalized I, please tell i us. think that well i don't it's not a matter of necessarily finalizing classes i think when we implement the classes in the alpha and and alpha 2 alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh that's when i think you're going to start seeing a lot of theory crafting around what people experience in those two uh, alphas. Uh, don't worry, this Discord will um, theory craft everything to the fucking yeah, smithereens. Yeah. We'll do it all for you, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have a question about combat again. Um, sure. What? Someone's just leaving and coming back. <laughs> yeah, they're just um, joining over and over again. At what point, if when if the negative if negative feedback comes in on your new combat iteration of action hybrid, um. Action tab tiger hybrid. Um, would you plan to take a step back and look back at the drawing board? Because as Is you there said, a it's specific scale on this point that you want. Like I, I'm I not mean, sure. Well, I mean, I... like you're you're taking a, a brand new style of combat that hasn't been tested in games before, and yep, yep. you're you're making like Correct. big. You're making a big leap of faith on this idea that it's going to be effective. Even what though I, mean, it's Steven, not, I wouldn't say, Stephen was it's saying that it's few types, few different like. Yes. Okay, I mean, well maybe I, I don't think leap it's of, a huge leap of faith. So, no, it yeah. is. Guys, let them let, uh, let them talk. The way they interact is completely different. We don't see that in normal MMOs, and right. like MMOs have gone down a similar path of combat style as is, and it's been a formula on that has worked out well. And all of a sudden, like a major shift in that formula to provide a more action style based combat, right. where headshots are guaranteed crits or whatever, like some things that has been said in the past like it's it, it really changes the dynamic of what combat right. is yeah and that could be very not, and like, absolutely it absolutely could be anytime you innovate there is risk uh that's the bottom line everything right, so, we have to, everything we have today right which is considered traditional at some point was innovative oh yeah but there's a ton of things that were innovative that didn't go out that's uh, that's what that's i'm that's what part. i'm asking about so here's part, here's yes. how you mitigate that risk though honestly is if you have iterations and demonstrations of that combat system at its base level before you continue to develop it more and more and more and we, get we community that, feedback at the lower level that's the safe that goes exactly that's along that's with what a, i was going to say before that's called you, a huh? shot that's called a shotgun approach and what you do is uh you create um you know multiple you create multiple prototypes of the way uh, that you expect something to go down. And traditionally in a design team, you would have each designer go back and, uh, you know, lay out the foundation of what they, ex they expect a hybrid system to be. You allow them to prototype um, in a gray box level or whatever. Uh, and then you evaluate each of the prototypes and you pick the ones that you think are applicable and you move forward with them. And then you so we're going to use, go on, right? 
Yeah, we're gonna but, use like player yeah, or yeah, tester. Yeah, that, I'm, wait, I'm wait, just giving that, you the, I'm, that I get that it, but our, can we just question. wait? Can you not? This doesn't actually answer my question. I'm saying when, if, if, not when, if those do come out with a negative impact on the game or negative reception, what does at what point do you take that negative reception and you say, okay, this is. Oh, like oh shit! I understand we what you're asking. Redo this. Right. I understand what you're asking. the The answer that I have is: Do you have a scale by which you want me to provide this answer? Is there like different points? You know, is it ten percent? What's the threshold? Yeah. I think everybody. It, I think everybody just yes. wants some type of reassurance. I think everybody oh, I think, like doesn't. Everybody wants have. to play. Everybody wants to play an MMO for all these different reasons. Some people like PvP. Some people sure. like crafting. Sure. Some people like crazy long quest chains. Some people like attunements. Yeah. These are all things that people. People have been puzzles. forward to for so many years. So I mean, it's it's just obvious that everything that's been shown isn't that great so far. And there's really nothing that anybody can do or say at this point until the community as a whole has a positive reception and starts seeing more systems, even if it's just the basics, and they agree with those fundamentals, right? I Wait, mean, that's was what... that Stabby's question? Question mark. Mm -hmm. Not at all. <laughs> I, 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 Stabby was asking. Hey, 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 hey. I think Stabby's legit asking if your combat system fails, are you going to fix this? Are you going to change it? Or yeah. Yeah, but it goes in line with the same I'm thing, sure. though. Question. I'm not even sure you know, how that's a question. Do you change it? Well, I mean, so, of course, so, of course so, he's going to change it if it's well, something. You don't this, fix it, you're going to fail. This happened with the quick time event. Well, let me... The quick time event it. was not received well, and then we changed. It. We changed. We, it. Oh, let, let me let me rephrase this to make it a bit more simpler. Right? Okay, so we have a combat system, right? Let's say, say hypothetically, the the hybrid system just fails completely miserably. Sure. Everybody hates it. They're ranting and going on yeah. YouTube videos like me. Um, we have contingencies for that, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> would you revert to a tab target or actual we, combat we, system our, exclusively, our one or the other? Our contingency, if a hybrid system were to fail is that we would revert to a traditional tab targeting. Um, okay. However, I do not believe that the hybrid system will. But, so yes. as we get into like contact with this hybrid system and we interact with it, at what like stages of development along the way are you guys going to be receptive to like making significant players, changes? Because obviously they like, have the, the game in their hands to test it. That, that's the purpose of the alphas and the beta. What made you well, decide hopefully that will be soon rather like than action later. Action combat, for example. Say again, Zara, I didn't that. hear you. I'm sorry. What was that? I said, what made you decide over tab targeting over action combat if it came down to that decision? Is it's it a more traditional popular? system that, that uh, has been done, tried, tested, and true in the past. Uh, and ultimately, while you know the desire is to create a hybrid system that can... Uh, innovate on what's been traditionally established in the MMORPG scene before. Um, we feel confident that uh, if we had to revert to a more traditional tab targeting system, that the other points of the game would be sufficient in order uh, to create this kind of innovative um, MMORPG that we're aiming to do, even if it were with a tab targeted combat system. I agree. It's more right. to just fall on the tab target, especially with the uh, Eastern, Eastern, Western audiences. But I think, I mean, the question of, you know, when do we make that decision? That's, that's really a difficult answer to give. I mean, I, I don't know the spectrum of a scale there. That I can would you say. make oh, it before I mean, launch or after launch? It's, it's based, I mean, yeah, it's no. Based, it's... Oh, it would absolutely be before launch, but it's, it's based around, um, you know, the, the whole purpose of having an open development like Ashes of Creation, when we move into alphas and betas, is that there are key yes. systems we want to test, and one of those key systems is obviously our hybrid combat system. And if we have to move back and reevaluate and redesign, that's something that we will do. And if we have to revert to a more traditional tab targeting system, that's something that you know I we guess, have considered as a contingency. I mean, yeah. From a from a player standpoint, we don't want to like get something and be like, hey, this sucks, and then you guys be like, nah, just wait, it's it's not complete yet, it'll get good, and then it like, never some gets color. good. Yeah, we spend sure. months testing about it right now, and get tempted. Or, yeah, or not, that's or the, not that's see the, it at all. That's the feeling with the like VR. Sure. I mean, nobody wants to do that, yes. Let us Margaret test all like the combat systems. Marks. I don't understand why okay. you're saying that, because you have the alphas and betas to actually test a portion of the combat. It's not Correct. like you're just never going to get into it unless you... Like, no, I only have the VR. 
Yeah, I mean, that's for some, my some question is, why, why, so, why so you're aware, that's, Hold on, just so you're aware, the way de development works is, it's a linear process. There is a point A to B. Um, and right now saying I only have the BR is discounting the fact that this is a linear development. Uh, so, you know, you I mean, gotta, he's, you just, gotta, he's just talking about what he, he's I, just I talking about what he has, which, is, which, is, what a, which is what you, like, in reality, what you have to look at is, like, what you have at the moment. You right can't now, just go, yes. like, oh, in two yeah, years, wait. like, I'm going to have, like, sure. I'm developing this supercomputer, but, like, in two years, it's going to work. But, like, right now, I have, like, just, like, not that valuable. That's how that supercomputers seems... are made, just so know. you know. I, that's I how supercomputers are made. Why don't we release the MMO right now so that we can all just... You know what? You know what? Guys, you convinced me. I'm going to... Let me just... I'm going to upload the MMO. You guys can go. Wow. That sounds good. Hey guys, 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 settle down, settle down. With the, uh, with the yeah, same with... A to B mindset of this is how development works, there's also the same A to B mindset with these are the concerns that I have at this point in development. It's like, it's not, it doesn't invalidate like the complaints and questions and comments that people have, like regardless of it being a true statement or not. Um, no, I, I don't think it does invalidate concerns. What it does invalidate, however, is predictions or speculation that, you know, what I'm telling you is not going to occur. But, if you have that you just feeling, have to show us would, more. But that, that's, that's how it works. That's correct. Going, right. And that's going to start happening hypothetically. You're absolutely but right. But that's how it yes. works. Like, you have to speculate to get to point, like, B. Like, you do not have to speculate to get to point B. That's actually incorrect. <laughs> yes, going yeah. off of the progression research. False. Idiot. I mean, you have to make a point, and then you have to get to that point, right? Correct. No. From Which requires point, from yeah. to speculation. <laughs> but work doesn't Just, always go as it go, like it's meant to do. Correct. Like, that's why things change in development. You went to C, and you come back to B. Yeah, but, that's that's yeah, iteration. Just, just as a point, you can't deal in an absolute when we're not even in the alpha one yet. Correct. That is yeah. absolutely correct. If I if I could ask one question, I gotta go here soon. Uh, sure. It's kind of minor and tangential, but uh, I've heard some people have concerns with like the the monthly releasing of cosmetics, like that the end game stuff. Uh, like I don't know if you're familiar with BDO, like the end game armors are just dull I'm as familiar. hell. Yes, yes, I've spoken about this in the past actually. Um, you know my the the issue. Uh, that I have with games like that and releasing, you know, as a mandatory way to kind of look good in the game is to have to buy it. Uh, I think that is subversive to effort that's put forward by players in games. And if there are things that are all uh, offered in a marketplace from a cosmetic standpoint, they should be alternatives, not better, quote unquote, um, than what's available through achievement in game. I just want a really big, heavy armor. I want to look super badass. We have, can I get we have, you can do that without armor. armor. Steven, I have a question about your I development research. Answer. Sure. Um, so I'm kind of a statement and a question. So I'm slightly concerned, basically, in your attempt to develop like a strong MMORPG, mm -hmm. that you might be forming the base of some of the systems you're developing, you know, primarily on what you hear and feedback from your dev team PI, and essentially outspoken, very involved members <laughs> of the community, because you'd want to make the best game at launch, and many of the more casual, less outspoken slash involved and essentially non-financially endowed individuals so people like outside of the phoenix initiative sure. who may make a large part of the game at launch mm -hmm. i'm just concerned they might not be able to give you any insight in the development process and that's a scary thing what do you basically plan to do to combat those potential biases in market sure. research and development? You can look you can look to our past actually and how we have invited um uh, invited individuals to participate in Alpha Zero. <clears throat> Originally, Alpha Zero was extended as an offer to uh, anybody at the um, PI level or above. Then we extended that offer to um, Alpha One individuals, and then we randomly invited uh, a thousand people from, um, I think, one of our PAX panels, uh, as well as raffled out uh, to anybody that registered, so that we had a healthy mix of uh, the demographic of MMO player, both from uh, players who are capable of, you know, spending a and lot on a game or... So those random websites, those, those random website people, like, what percentage of the total pool do they make up? Because that's your true, you know, fairly... There's inherent biases with that piece, I but that's, was, you know, that's it, your it was, most diverse... Lot. And there was a lot, yeah. Alpha, Alpha Zero was the majority people. key winners. Like, so you're <laughs> fairly, you're fairly basically people. confident that you know, of course, they have to have an interest in your MMO, but basically, you're fairly confident that that's a representative 
you know, somewhat representative sample I, of the population. I mean, the purpose, the purpose of doing that, um, you know, was to have a widespread demographic, a good sampling size. And but the that won't happen in for that one, was right? really on par. Like, if you saw, I don't know, it's not in the to say it, but the forums, um, all the people in Alpha Zero really gave good feedback and actually collected all the information properly. So I think yeah. the output of that was actually really well. Yeah, I would agree. That's that's what we experienced as well, Zara. I had fun in Alpha uh, Zero. I guess well, part I of the problem is, is you know, is there's like not the really one. been no 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 Alpha One keys have been given out in a very long time. So anybody that's jumped on the game in almost like the last year, well, there was a couple on one of the streams for Castle Siege, and I think one, like but like two. So it can't right. be rep. So anybody that's jumped on the yeah, game in the last the key, bit, like kind of hasn't. Why come. We don't, the reason why we don't the reason why I don't want to hand out Alpha 1 keys is because Alpha 1 has a uh, direct monetary value, whereas Alpha 0 was not something that was specifically sold uh, as part of necessarily a package, so to speak. Or, and it's exclusive. Or, so like, I mean, people, was, you're not going to have a bunch of... Um, like, I don't want to like, undermine the value of Alpha 1 by hmm. offering a lot of free keys, so to what speak. What about Beta 0? I think that wouldn't be... <laughs> Stop it. Received well by, by I, I, that's a I see that question. point. Wait, People no, would be really Beta upset Zero was announced. I see that point, but you know, Beta unfortunately, Zero. even though it has a monetary yes, value, Zero you know, confirmed. the opportunity to buy into that now has been expired for anybody that's not in the basically Kickstarter or summer backer program. So anybody new that comes on board, no, 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 to no, I get that. I'm just saying that <laughs> up to September. Years. No, I get it. I'm just saying that because if you're really concerned about the monetary monetary piece of that, and you know, the fact sure. that it has that value, you know, people would still buy into that. And then you'd have people that were newly coming out of the game, which represent sure. a different demographic. So, you know, right. that's not, it's a point, but it's not. I mean, there, there are logistics that go into that type of decision that don't relate necessarily to the point that you're, you know, bringing up. Uh, and, and I really am, am kind of bound by those logistics as well, uh, yeah. particularly behind, you know, the technical parameters that my engineers have told me they want to confine Alpha 1 from a testing perspective to. Um, so that's why we had to stop sales of Alpha 1. Obviously, from a business and a marketing perspective, I would love to say, hey, we're yeah. continuing to sell Alpha 1. But, you know, the objective is to create the best possible game. So and those technical I... specifications lift substantially between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2? Correct. Okay. I, have a, I have a question. Why sure. are you not lifting the NDA on the Alpha Zero, like, visuals? No, it doesn't matter. We could no, but I think that would help people. Yeah. I think I the reason... I think the reason why, you know, I want to keep in place the visual NDA of Alpha Zero um, is because uh, the moment that that becomes released, um, you know, it starts to date very quickly, very, very quickly. And the problem with with um, uh, things that date quickly and the fact that our art is still moving forward is that if it's released in newly created content by content creators or by, you know, press that's picking it up or whatever, like that, that becomes the face of the project. Uh, and we really don't want that to be the face yet. We're more um, content with allowing for you know the 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 fact that there is a little bit of a dry spell now before the content that we're able to release for Alpha One becomes available, we're more content with taking that risk and uh, you know disgruntledness moving forward. And then when Alpha One releases, you know having that excitement and the up to date you know world and art that is there and all the mechanics that are present and the systems that excite people and whatnot, you know that's really kind of the objective I think yeah. we want to present as a face of the company. I just thought it would help people actually, you know, see that there actually is an MMO, no, right? You're absolutely Not just like, right. Oh, it's yeah. just a lot of people don't know. It's it's absolutely yeah. that is an a fair. I mean, okay, when you're when you're making a decision, you have a, a scale, a balance. And yeah, that for is sure. that is the other side of the scale. Uh, yes, that is the other that is the other side of the scale. Um, but again, making that decision really was just weighing the two and coming yeah. to a decision. No, your answer, answer makes sense. Most. That people see it's old better. as broken stuff, but they don't get that it's like two years old. Yeah. Right. No, his answer makes sense. Like, a, yeah, I get it. What was the nail in the coffin for the Exola change? Um, I think it was just a, a valid concern from the community uh, that brought it up. And after some investigation uh, by, you know, the team and, and looking at... Jalen's um, analysis? The, the, uh, it was no, crazy. No, it, wasn't taxes, actually, it wasn't, you know, that decision was made before Jalen's analysis. Okay. Um, uh, it was really just, you know, the, the PI kind of brought up some, our Phoenix Initiative group kind of brought up some specific examples and showed, uh, you know, some stuff that was alarming and 
Okay. Yeah, is Thank it going to be more balanced now between solo. EU and NA? I'm sorry, say again? Is it going to be more balanced now, like, for EU and NA people to purchase things? Like, that it feel like, felt like there was quite a... Yeah, I think that I think that the balance with regards to when we had we're using Stripe and and uh, PayPal uh, was agreeable with uh, the players in those regions, uh, and that's what we'll be moving. Okay. EU testing lives matter. I have a question: Are we going to have any more um, uh, studio sponsored events for the community? Like, uh, yes. or, or are those going to happen regularly, or it's just what's the the he's not giving dates anymore for now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, he might if you push him enough. So there, are, there, there are different. There's different types of events, right? We want to do more um, uh, virtual events, and then we also have you know events planned for in person as well at the future trade shows that we'll announce that we'll be going to. I'd actually like to suggest an event. I heard that there's <laughs> going to be at least one moon for Vera, and said moon is unnamed as of yet. I would like to have a name that moon. Who, who told you there's only one moon? Yeah, there's three. Well, I did not see, see say Is there a flat? Only, only one moon. I heard that <laughs> there was going to be at Ashan. least one moon. Ashon, oh. I remember meeting you at PAX East, I believe. Yes, you did. <laughs> we had a good chat there. Yes, you um, did. Is that you? He's <laughs> even. What yeah, about they're, that they're, one they're, community well, event least... that the, the mods had that never happened uh, where multiple multiple people yeah, there was like the ashes video. challenge and it just yeah, died no that thing was so happened. stupid and it made like three remember. videos with fushi about it it just no, it was it was a saru event where he just oh, okay. it's like my dream you didn't even me. know about it that's half the problem right <laughs> yikes yeah, and the so, thing was like really upsetting because I made three videos with Fushi and now there's nothing. Ashon, Ashon, I love your idea, by the way, just to get back to that real quick. Um, um, I would just say that there is specific lore behind the names of those, uh, uh, be behind the names of the one or possible many moons of Vera. Um, so I, I, can, I name, can I name a star in the sky? If you don't mind, I want to. For $500. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can I you have name to, a you have specific to tree? We <laughs> know the real king. What Ooh, Stephen yeah. hasn't told you is that to name a moon in Vera, you have to pay the $15,000 package. It's uh, oh, there you go. It was the automatic to be a king of you a know, moon. Know, we haven't released that yet. We didn't release that yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finally, Finally, it's it's down. Act fast. Fushi will upgrade. <laughs> um, hey, Stephen, can I ask you something? Yes. So uh, currently my biggest problem I think, is that your extensive vision that you originally shared and promised that grabbed the MMO community in the first place, at this point seems like an unachievable goal in the time frame that you've stuck with. And I feel like many of the commitments are going to be broken unless we were to wait for like a five-year term at this point. There was just so many mm. things that seemed like they were a promise to be in the MMO, which are great and cover lots of you know things that people enjoy about MMOs, but I'm just not really sure that they're actually going to be able to be achieved in the time frame. I know that obviously you weren't set on, or, well, you've always had the goal of releasing this year or by the end of the year, but I think that that would be like a, what's the term, a hag, a hairy audacious sure. goal that's just completely unachievable. Hairy audacious, I like it. Okay. It is a hag. <laughs> that's great. Um, what was there a question there? Is the game going to come out in 2019, Stephen? No, oh. basically, that oh, is no. not what he asked. No. Stephen no, doesn't give states. That is not what he asked. That's what I asked. No. If there was like, no things like <laughs> error in development. Bruce, I can't hear you, buddy. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Sorry. I was just saying there's promises of things like the naval combat, the diplomacy, the crafting system, you know, the religious system. Yes. It just seems like so many things to get filed out and actually be in a good working order in a short amount of time. 200 developers. Yes. So, so that's, I mean, that's more of a statement, but I would say that um, from, from a uh, schedule standpoint, <clears throat> um, you know, there are two components, one uh, resources, um, uh, time and features, right? And, um, you know, from a resource standpoint, we're hiring additional people. Yes, we, we fell short a little bit as the letter explains in hiring uh, those people that could be partly, you know, a result of, I guess, my pickiness on, on who we bring on board. No one's good but, enough for you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, from a, from a resource standpoint, we're, we're hiring to achieve those particular features. Uh, from a, a feature standpoint, um, most of those features, most of those systems 
share or correlate it uh, in design. Um, so uh, creating the fundamental systems behind how those systems work um, is shared work. Uh, and at that point, then it becomes really a, a, a result of uh, design mechanics of those things, uh, not necessarily the code base, but the design and mechanics of those things, the UI, the art. Um, and from that perspective, I don't see a problem of us being able to achieve uh, all of what we have described at, at launch. Um, I said in the past, because I've been asked this question, if you uh, do not see a certain feature being capable of being released, you know, in the time frame that you find acceptable, you know, what would you do? And the answer there is, if I see that there is a particular system that is holding up the general release of the game, um, then I would... Uh, postpone the, the particular system uh, for an update or an expansion post-launch, and then I would uh, launch the game as long as the state in which the game is being launched is to my standard uh, and to the community's expectations. What about hey, Stephen, uh, um, hey, patch Stephen. after release? Well, so that violates kind of like the original agreement of Kickstarter. Does. I don't think it really violates it. I think so. so if, if, that would consider to be finished before release and is in the actual Kickstarter list that it would have to be completed before release, as such as the bonuses, naval content, for example. Well, there was yeah, extensive exactly. naval content. Doesn't that depend on what you're actually adding? It could be something new that they came up with recently. But is this, well, if he's saying he's going to say... cut content. No, well, first of all, we don't have to cut content. Second of all, I would say that um, even on Kickstarter at the bottom of the page, right, it, I think it talks about. Phoning the uh, a date that's more about like delaying the date rather than uh, releasing the product without the full content. Again, what I stated was that um, you know I don't foresee any issues with the with the feature list that we have described. If there was a particular system that was holding up the rest of the game, so long as it was not a fundamental or core system. Uh, it, what I would do is I would not delay the release of the game as a result. See, I'm totally fine with that because I have an ongoing bet with uh, Jealous that if a uh, game releases before 2020, he's going to become an elf and he hates elf, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, he's going to pull the Empyrean route? That's going to be low for him. Mm -hmm. why, why are we yet to see why are we yet to see fully fleshed out concept art for all the races at this point? Uh, Never. Is that another yeah, and all the bio. Yeah. yeah, this is another date thing. Turn out at rear. But Steve, concept art surely is done later. I have a question about your lore. Don't answer the no, date. No, there's question. no pie. Don't pull the question. I'm not asking about Don't ask about pies. Uh, he's going to ask a real question yeah, so for once. About man. lore. Like, how deep is. Uh, you you expect your lore in your game to be because I know you're a big D and D fan. Um, do you have like a secret big bad like evil or something like that? So uh, the lore is is fair is is very deep and expansive, and I think that you will be able to see um, aspects of the lore that's not just you know present in the MMO. I think from a um, literature standpoint and potentially. Uh, you know, from a film standpoint as well, there could be potential for the lore to to have expansions in that regard. Uh, it's it's pretty deep. Um, Even what's your favorite race? I can't oh, no, say no, no, that. No, no, no. It's not. This is going to create like a. It'll wait. It's obviously elves. If you say no, no, the elves. No, he can't say it because this has become a race war. Uh, you can't have a master race. Is it I mean, think about the, the elves only are thing already I would say, The only thing I would say is that traditionally in past MMOs I've elves. played primarily humans. But <laughs> yeah, he yeah, been but wow. You're going to get Omar, of course. He wants yeah, everyone to hate him. In every I, gotta, I, have, I have to jump off because I have a call, guys. But hey, listen, I want you to know I 100% appreciate and do not shy away at all from either you know coming in and answering hard questions or whatever the deal may be, sentiment being happy, negative, whatever it is. I want you to know you know my endeavor and the team's endeavor is is creating this game for you guys. Oh, uh, and that is, that is our that's our objective. So when um, do we get a in that you case, how are you going to handle sentiment? <laughs> I appreciate the chat, guys. Have a good well, night. Thank you, Steven. We stopped Sorry. all our questions. Take care. Yeah, yeah, bye. Delete right. uh, uh, Jesus. They all the wall around the yeah, yeah, that yeah. 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 He said he was going to leave. I thought I was going to ask about Paz. I love you, Steven. He's gone. You always ask about Paz. He's here. I think he will shout out I love you, Steven. All right, let's be real. Let's be real. Elves are the master race. Tolnar suck. Tolnar suck. Tolnar suck.